Hi everyone, in my previous video, I talked about what an API is and why Notion's API launch is such a big deal for all of us. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly connect a Notion table to a Google Sheet so that you can populate a Notion table from the rows that you add on this Google Sheet. So this is just one of the things that is possible now that Notion has a public API. And you can do it the other way as well. That is, you can populate this Google Sheet uh, while entering information on a, a Notion table instead. Today, what we're going to do is find out how to populate a Notion table using information from a Google Sheet. So quickly, we're going to add a table that we're going to connect to the Google Sheet here. So first thing we want to do is setting up the Notion table because I've already set up the Google Sheet here. So this Notion, uh, this Google Sheet is actually populated from this Google Form. It's a very simple thing uh, to do. As you know, you just go to forms.google.com and set up a form. And then when you go to responses, you click on the Google Sheet to connect this Google Form to this Google Sheet. This is exactly what I've done. A few questions here. And upon people submitting answers on this Google form, this sheet gets populated. This is what is happening on the back end right now. What we now want to do is whenever there is a new row on this Google sheet, we want a new row to be added to this Notion table. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's label this Notion database. About our team and these are the columns I want to fill I want to map these columns so first is timestamp is by default it's all right let's just hide it for now it doesn't matter your name and then choose one between summer and winter so we want to create a column that says that's a single select option that says choose one Choose one amongst what? We have to give the options here. So summer and winter. All right. So make sure that it's spelled exactly right. Next, we have choose a color. Color should be red, blue, and green. Let's create another column. Single select. So they'll select either red, blue, or green. If you have the time, you can go and change the colors uh, here as well so that it's more representative. The title is color. Then we have attending our next event. So the RSVP is yes, no, or maybe. So we're going to add that column here as well. Single select. Attending our next event. Yes, no, or maybe. So these are the possible options that people can select on this Google form. And once they submit it there, we're connecting this Google sheet to this table. So we're going to quickly delete all of these rows so that a fresh row can be populated. So what exactly is this table anyway? So let's say that this is actually a page of your website. So on the share options, you could actually make it publicly visible and maybe not allow duplication. So what happens is it's actually a web page that you could probably map to your domain. So your website.com slash team that leads to here. And then this page is actually populated using a simple Google form. So that's one of the ways in which a Google form can be used uh, to power a Notion page. So now I'm going to show you how to get the connection going. Now that we've set up the database, we're now going to use Zapier to connect Google Sheet and this database. So go to Zapier and uh, maybe your Zapier is empty because this is the first time that you're using uh, using Zapier. No problem, just go to, on the left, just go to Zaps or click on Make a Zap or go to Zaps and say Create Zap. Any of those works. Oops, give me a moment. 
Sorry about that. That's that was my dog. So this is what your Zapier workspace looks like. So first we can name our Zap so that it's easy to understand. Google Sheets to Notion. And what we want to do is every time there is a new row on this Google Sheet, we want a new row on this table. That's what we're going to set up here. So trigger. So what should start the zap? We want a new row. Whenever a new row is added here, we want this to get into action. So the first thing is new row in Google Sheets. So Google Sheets is right here. So the trigger is Google Sheet. The trigger event is that whenever a new spreadsheet row is added. So it's triggered when a new row is added to the bottom of a spreadsheet, which is awesome. That's exactly what we want to do. And you can see this little badge called instant here. Instant means um, sometimes zaps actually wait for like 15 minutes and uh, an hour. Sometimes it depends on what plan of Zapier you're on. But this is instant. It means that it will trigger every time there is a new spreadsheet row. So you have to connect your Google Sheets account here. So just go to choose an account. And right now my account is already added. If your account is not already added, just click on connect a new account and add your Google uh, Google account there. That's as simple as that. And that is it. Now what we have to do is once our account is connected, we choose which spreadsheet we want to pull this data from. Our spreadsheet here is called learn about your team uh, responses. So let's go back and choose that spreadsheet. Learn about your team responses. Worksheet so there's many worksheets here, right? Uh, so for example, there can be sheet two, sheet three, etc. But there's only one now. So we're going to use that. So worksheet is form responses one. So when we refresh the field, you can see other sheets as well. But we want the first worksheet. So you continue. So every time there is a new row here, this zap gets triggered to do something. That something is what we're going to set up to connect it to the Notion table. Next step. So here, the thing about Zapier is that you have to test this trigger and you have to test the steps every single time. Now you can't test this trigger because there is no row. We were saying every time there is a new spreadsheet row, but there is no spreadsheet row. So let's go ahead and add a sample so that it can test the trigger and make sure that it actually works. Now as a simple way is to probably go to the Google form and type some dummy data. Submit. And just make sure that it's been added here. Awesome. It's been added to row number three. Let's quickly delete row number two. And now we can test the trigger. And this is awesome. So right now, when C submitted a row, with all of this information looks about right. So continue. And now it says successful. Great. So the trigger is successful as indicated by this green check mark here. The next thing is once it's triggered, what do you want it to do? What should the action be? So the action should be that it should create a new row on this notion table as well. So what should it be a notion table? So let's search for notion. Amazing. So what should happen on notion? We want to create a new database item. A new database item is just a new row. The second option here is updating an existing row. And the third option is searching for a row and pulling it out. For now, we're just creating a new row. So let's create one and then click on continue. Now we have to connect the Notion account. Now here is where things get a little confusing a little more complicated than you might think. So let's just make sure that we understand it step by step. First, you click on choose an account and connect a new account. Now what it says when you connect a new account, I'm not sure if you're able to see this window, is allow Zapier to access your Notion account, question mark, and it says give us a token. So there's a blank here that asks you to enter your Notion token. Now I'm going to show you how to get that Notion token. Go to Notion, 
the key here is that you should be the admin of your workspace now here this workspace is just my it's my free personal plan so it's okay if you're on your free personal plan also it's completely fine as long as you have the admin power uh, that should be enough now on the left go to settings and members on your workspace and right at the bottom you have integrations if you don't see it here it, it means that your notion app has not been updated yet so please update your Notion app and you will be able to see integrations here. Now you can see if you're still uh, starting with this, like I am on this workspace, it's completely empty. There's no integrations here. So it, here there's an option called develop your own integrations, right? Click on that. And then it opens a new window. On this new window, it shows you about your integrations on Notion. Now these are some of the integrations that I have on my account because I was testing it out earlier. But if you're just beginning, you might not have anything here. So click on create new integration and you can name it whatever you want let's say you can call it google sheets to notion call it whatever you want really it doesn't matter you can upload a logo as well and the associated workspace you should be very careful as to what workspace it is mine is actually when sees notion 2 if you're not sure what your notion workspace is called go back to notion and see on the top left it's called when sees notion 2 so just make sure that that is selected and submit that's it. So you can get the token from here where it shows you once and then you can copy or if you forgot to copy it, go back to about our team. Um, sorry, go back to your Notion workspace, go to settings and members, click on integrations and this time this will actually show. So here are these three dots. You can click on those three dots and click on copy internal integration token and copy token. And this is what you need to integrate your Notion through your um, Google Sheets integration on Zapier. So now Notion account, click on this and connect a new account. And I'm not sure if you can see the pop-up window that opened for me. There will be literally one blank there. Just enter what uh, the token that you've just copied there and say yes, continue. And it will be connected. So because I have other Notion tokens that I've just added, this is Notion token number four for me. For you, it might just be called Notion itself. And it's been successfully added. Now, what will happen now is when you, when you, now it's saying, let us set up an action on the Notion database. When you click on the database here, nothing shows up here. And you might be like, you might think that uh, Zapier doesn't support Notion yet. And maybe you have to wait for a few days. That's what I thought. But that's not it. The point is that Zapier can't see the database because the way the API is added here is as a new member as a guest on your notion workspace so you want to first share this database with your guest right so what you want to do is either this team or just click and open this as a page open this table as a page and click on share and invite and select an integration google sheets to notion that's why it's important to name it properly so you know what you're talking about Google Sheets to Notion and it can edit. You want it to be able to edit and invite. That's it. Now go back to Zapier and click on refresh fields. And now you should be able to find the database. If you still can't find it, we'll refresh the page a couple of times. And you can see it here and just make sure that the database is named right as as far as uh, you start connecting these databases you might be confused with a huge list of them here so make sure that you go back and check the name of the database it's called notion API about our team and we choose the same one from here now you refresh the fields now you can see that all the fields on this table are now pulled onto Zapier. So now you want to map this information from here to these different blanks on the Notion table. So that's what we're going to do. That's the last step and we're good to go. So for name on this Notion table, you want to pull that data from your name on the Google Sheets. Here in this particular row, it's Vensi. In choose one, it's basically choosing one from summer or winter from the Google Sheets. So go to custom and choose one summer or winter. In this case, I chose winter. So that is what will be pulled. 
and attending our next event? The answer to that is not yes, no, or maybe. It's not one single answer. It's actually dynamic based on what you choose in the Google Sheets, so in the, on the Google Form. So attending our next event, in this case, I said yes. So that's what it will say in this first row. Next color, favorite color is not red, blue or green from Notion. It's actually pulled from the Google Sheets. The color is blue as I selected earlier. And this is all there is. Now, if you enter other information in this content, I'll show you what happens, how it gets added in just a bit. Um, so let's say we just add something here like the timestamp, the timestamp of when this row was submitted is added within the content of this block. So now this has been mapped up all nice. So continue. And our action is almost set up. But like I said, it always wants to test things before it confirms. So let's click on test and review and make sure that it actually works. This green check mark says that it's all working well. It says a database item was sent to Notion just now. Let's make sure that it actually did. And it did. Look. When see winter blue and yes, let's go make sure that is it. When see winter blue and yes, that's amazing. So now uh, one last thing that I want to show you is the timestamp is is inside this block. So when you open this as a page, you can see the timestamp inside. So you can embed any content that you want and make it say things. I'll give you one last example before turning on this app. I will say this form entry was submitted by by Wensi, but that information is given to given by this person in the Google form in the entry called your name. So submitted by Wensi on date on date and time, let's say for now it should work and we'll give the timestamp here. So now when you write this sentence, and continue and let's test it once more. Retest action. And it says it's been sent to Notion. Let's go back to Notion and the new entry has been created. When you open this page now, it says this form entry was submitted by Wensi on date and time, so and so. So this is one interesting way in which you can populate the insides of each of these blocks. So I'm gonna quickly go and delete some of these entries and I'm going to switch on the zap. So when you click on turn on your zap is on and it's all ready. So when it's green, it means that it is actively searching for new rows on the sheet. And whenever there's a new row here, it populates a new row here on this notion table. So let's just try this out and submit another response and see if it works and see Krishna. This time I'm going to choose summer, I'm going to choose red, and I'm going to say no and submit it. Now, because the zap is used to connect Notion with Google Sheets, every time there's a new row on this Google Sheets, there should be a new row on this table. And it might take a couple of minutes. It might take a few minutes. It might take a couple of minutes depending on what plan of Zapier you're on, but you can see here that it has been updated on my database. So what's a good use case for something like this? Like I said, maybe this is a website page that is actually live for your audience. And then instead of populating it yourself every single time, you connect the database or you connect this table. Maybe you make this into a gallery view instead or a calendar view, depending on what kind of table it is. And then the source for the data is actually nested in a Google form. So you send this Google form every single time you have a team member, for example, and then automatically this page gets populated with that data. So this is just one of the millions of things that are now possible because of the Notion API. I hope that this was helpful. This is a beginner's tutorial on how you can connect a Notion table with a Google Sheet. And then if a Google Sheet is actually connected to a Google form, then it is even more easy to start updating public, publicly visible tables. So I hope that this was helpful and I look forward to hearing about your experiences in connecting Notion with Google Sheets and a tool of your choice using Zapier. Have fun.